Hey everybody, welcome to Reach Out Reptiles, where we're a bridge between worlds, the man-made and natural. This week we're going to use these two little guys, uh, dwarf retics from the same clutch, looking totally different, to talk about modes of genetic inheritance, different morphs and things, and, and how some of that stuff works. We'll be able to use Punnett squares, a little box method where you can throw all your genes down, and we'll think outside the box, and I'll show you how I can kind of like mentally calculate you know, this is five different genes at play in one clutch. You come up with so much variety. And uh, I'll invite you guys to follow along. Okay, guys, so check this out. Your genetic makeup or a snake's genetic makeup or whatever is like this long list of all these things. Like, oh, look, this is the part right here. That's the, the gene that makes your stomach work. And this is the part that tells you to be a snake and not a bird or whatever. And it's huge. And all the variation that we see from colors and patterns and morphs or with people, hair, eye color, all that kind of stuff comes from a very, very small part of that genetic code. Let's say every reticulated python looks the same. You know you know what a wild type reticulated python looks like. They all look like this. They're all over the jungle running around like this because this is a good way to look in the jungle. Let's say we got mama over here and dada over here. So mom throws an egg and she doesn't give the whole, the, you know, the cell in the body is gonna have a complete set of DNA. But in a gamete, in this case, in her egg, she's only able to deposit half of that information. This is actually called uh, Mendel's law of segregation. So this half comes in, and then dad, he throws uh, a gamete out, which would be the sperm, and it's carrying half of his information, and pff, the two fuse together and they make a new snake. Now because mom had all the same genetic traits as dad in this example, everybody looks the same. But every now and then, once in a blue moon, something miraculous happens and boop, one of those genes somehow flips. So this would be like, ooh, you know, an albino gene shows up or something crazy like that. And then, uh, you know, what we would normally see is natural selection takes its place. So you don't have like tons of albinos running around in the wild and stuff like that unless humans are involved because we like what's pretty and we always mess with nature like that. So let's talk about this. Let's, we'll say we're, we're talking about an albino. Okay, are you guys following this? So here we have a wild snake, right? And then a gene flips. Ah, uh, and it becomes heterozygous for a trait. Or sometimes you get a double flip with a recessive. This would be like an albino showing up in the wild, which is crazy, but it does happen. <clears throat> so you get this albino showing up in the wild. And I want to breed this albino, cool new genetic trait or whatever, to one of my normal animals. And, you know, no matter what combination I throw, whether I throw this one or this one, and this one and this one, everything is going to end up being a het albino, meaning they look normal, but they carry that little gene albino underneath. So the way we make more albinos in captivity is you take two of these hets, which I have over here, and you breed them together, and you want to find out what you've got, okay? So these are made from breeding an albino parent to a normal parent, everything in the clutch comes out hats. Now when I breed these together, we're gonna to use something like a Punnett square to show how it works. But basically what you wanna do is pull one set inform of information off of each card into a gamete, sperm and egg, and then pretend like they match up and see what happens. And what we're gonna do is uh, just use a little bit of a code. We're gonna represent it with an arbitrary number. We're talking about albinos, so let's say A. All right, <clears throat> so I'm gonna write this out on the chalkboard, but when you have a dominant gene like this, it's gonna be a big letter A. And when you have a recessive gene like this, it's gonna be a little letter A, okay? So a totally normal snake, this is gonna be big A, big A on our chalkboard in a minute here. This would be big A, little A. And this would be little A, little A. If we're talking about albino, recessive means it needs little a, little a to become an albino. So the reason why we're moving this to a chalkboard is so we can show every different possible combination. Okay, let's go check it out. All right, first thing you wanna do if you're gonna draw a Punnett square is you draw a square. Now we're only looking at one genetic trait right now, which is albinos, right? Um, and so we have our parents over here. Remember one's big A, little a, this is a het. Remember, het means two different things, okay? And then um, 
we have two parents that are hets. Okay, now, you may have uh, a homozygous dominant or a homozygous recessive, okay? Now, this animal and this animal, anytime there's a big A in the equation, it's gonna look normal or not albino because again, that big A hides the little A underneath, all right? Now, these two animals actually will have the albino gene, but you're not gonna see it in this one. You will see it in this one. This is the only possible combination right here that's gonna actually give us an albino. All right, so our problem is, what do you get when you breed a het albino to a het albino? Okay, again, because of Mendel's law of segregation, meaning that, you know, every gamete, doo -doo -doo, here's a little gamete on the boy, and here's the egg from the girl, a gamete can only get half of that information. So this one is either going to throw a little A or a big A. It carries half of that genetic code. The egg will have a big A or a little a. So we need to split these up. Now, when we do a Punnett square traditionally, I mean, this doesn't really matter, but usually you're gonna throw dad's genetic traits up on top. Okay, so dad is big A, little a, right? And just for formatting purposes, whenever we write these up, we're gonna put the big letters in the front. Makes it look nice. Big A, little a. That's a het albino. Mom is gonna be a big A and a little a. All right, now all we have to do is ma match them up now that we have them written out on the square. So if the gamete carrying this gene from dad comes down here and that's gonna pair up to the gamete from this gene from mom, this is the babies that we're gonna get. If this one comes down from dad and this one comes across from mom, we're gonna get this. If this, and same thing, so we just run these down, big A from mom over here gets a little A, and then check this one out, here's where something special happens, little A, little A. It doesn't work out perfectly every time either, it's like rolling the dice. If you roll a dice six times, statistically you'll hit every number once. Go try it and see if that actually happens. So you get two fourths, or half of the clutch is going to be the het albino, okay? One quarter is going to be a non-het albino, all right? One quarter, this two quarters is a half, guys. Half the clutch is gonna be like this. And then one out of four babies, or one quarter of the clutch, statistically will be albino. So if I get four eggs, I should get one albino. And two snakes that have the albino gene but don't show it, and one normal. Now this is where you get those confusing percentages and stuff, like a pos het, okay? So check it out. If the breeding was from a het albino to a het albino, one in four of my snakes is going to be albino, and all the rest of them are not going to be albinos. Or let's go back to the example of the animals I had earlier. The breeding that made these start to might be a little bit mind-boggling here. So between the two, we actually have five different genes at work. We have Motley, one, Tiger, two, Albino, three, Annery, four, and Golden Child is our fifth trait. Let's name these things real quick. A Motley, we have Motley, right? Which is gonna be like this. We have Tiger, big T, little t. We have Albino, well, let's do Golden Child, big G, little g. And then we have Albino, uh, this is a big A, little a, and an annery. Let's call R because annery removes all the red pigment. So we have a big R and a little r. All right, now that's just to help us keep it straight in our minds. This is five different genetic traits. One, two, three, four, five. And if I bred five het animals to a five het animal, or in this case, um, what dad is going to be, is he has none of this golden child flipped. So on that allele, he's gonna be like this, okay? And he's a het albino, het annery. Mom does not have any motley or tiger. So her, you know, that part of her genetic code still exists, but it's all dominant and it has never been flipped. But she is a golden child, uh, not a super golden child, just a normal golden child. So that one's flipped and she's a het albino, a het annery. You see how that looks? So the, the problem now is gonna be mom and dad times this. 
All right, this is gonna be pretty complicated. You might just wanna shut the video off. Okay guys, seriously, if all you wanted was Snake Genetics 101, stop the video here, cause we're about to go 505 on you. Okay, do you remember how we segregated out the genetic code for gametes, the egg and the sperm, where they get one from mom and one from dad? For this method, you need to be able to do that mentally. Rather than drawing a square and separating them, big A, little a, and separating them down, you need to be able to figure it out. So let's take the first genetic trait, and we need to do it for every single trait we have, okay? So this is how I, I compute this stuff mentally. Now, obviously, five genes is pretty mind-boggling, but let's give it a go. Can you guys quiet down? These snakes are just so rude. If you remember mom uh, from our previous problem, she was not a motley. So looking at our first category, let me see how big I can go on the screen here. First category, yeah, about right there. Um, we have, just looking at the motley only, you know, mom, oh, we'll do dad first. Dad was a motley. So he was a heterozygous motley. It's incomplete dominant, so it does show up. Um, and he's got one of these. And the mom was double double. Now, if you remember from our little example, when you breed a het to a normal, you only get two different possibilities from that. And that's this. One possibility up here at the top is going to be a non-motley. And one possibility down here at the bottom is going to be a motley. So forgetting all other genes for a moment, when we breed a motley to a normal, half the clutch comes out in motleys. And that's what this looks like. You see that? If we were to divide that, half of that clutch is going to be motleys, represented by big M, little m. And half are non-motleys, represented by big M, big M. Okay. Now, we need to figure out, for each set of genes, uh, what the next trait is. So that was a tiger. If you remember, dad was a motley tiger double head snow. Mom was a golden child double head snow. She had no tiger in it. Now, we need to divide for this half. I'll just show you. All right. <clears throat> so again, breeding a, a het to a non-het, you have two possibilities you can get. You can get the non-tiger and you can get the tiger, okay? And we need to duplicate it down here so that when we match these possibilities to these possibilities, we get everything. So non-tiger and tiger. These are just duplicate set of information. This is the actual results. You're gonna get half tigers, half non-tigers. Now I have to keep doing this for every different gene. So the next one was golden child. Mom was, dad wasn't. So for this combination, we are going to have a non-golden child and a golden child, which is one of these was flipped. I have to now do this for all of these. Okay, let's just stop with this and let me show you where I'm going. What I need to do is I need to figure out the possibilities of everything. So, <clears throat> I'm gonna draw an independent path matching every possible combination. Okay, so half the clutch will be motleys. Half of those will be tigers. Half of a half is one quarter. So a quarter of the clutch could be a motley tiger. And a half of those quarter is going to also be a golden child. So this is, we got the trait, we got the trait, we got the trait. It's a half of a half of a half. So you're you're gonna get one in eight. So half quarter eighth. One in eighth of the clutch is gonna be a motley tiger golden child. But if you remember, mom and dad were both hets. So let's say albino, okay? We have het to a het. Do you remember when we did het to het breeding? There were three possible outcomes, even though um, the hets and the normals look the same. Ooh, that other one is is gonna be your albino. So <clears throat> Let's say for this path, for example, we're going to make a copy of, of the albinos. And again, I'm going to just mentally do this. I know that when I breed a het to a het, my three possible outcomes are a non-het. Okay. We have a het, big A, little a, and we have an albino for each one. Now, I also know that if you, you remember that this was two-fourths right? Or half of the clutch was this. This was only one fourth. This was only one fourth. You guys remember that? And we trace this path down. We have half the clutch is motleys, 
quarter of the clutch is going to be a motley tiger one eighth of the clutch is going to be a motley tiger golden child and only one fourth of the one eighth will also be the albino of that so what is another way to do this is eight times four what is eight times four i only get if i'm going to run this chance a one in 32 chance of hitting a motley tiger golden child albino it's one in 32 um, is is going to be that. Now let's let's add in the anery gene. Remember, we're going to represent that with uh, big R, little R, and both parents were hets. So we're now to our fifth gene. Again, I'm only doing the hot stuff here for for the crazy five gene snake. Which, by the way, I, I had uh, it, the clutch number was in the 30s, and I did not get any of these. In fact, I only got one snow, which is an albino anery. But out of for each one of these three now, I have to make the three possibilities from breeding a het to a het. So I'll do that here. This wouldn't fit if I made them this big. It should really be like this big. But um, So I have my three possibilities. One in four of the clutch, if you remember, is going to be a non-het. One in four of the clutch is going to be a het. And one fourth of those is going to be my recessive anery gene. So <clears throat> we have half of the clutch is going to be motleys. Only half of those motleys, you know, when you go here and here, uh, only half of those motleys are going to be tigers. So half of a half is a quarter. Only half of that quarter, because you could go here or here, is going to be golden child. So you have one eighth. Okay, and then when you hit this part, only a quarter of those, because you're going to have uh, one path that goes here. You remember, you're getting two paths that go there, uh, and you can write that out twice for your four possibilities if that helps you. <clears throat> but you only have one out of four goes here. So eight times four, or one-fourth of one-eighth, is one part in 32 to get that. And then we have to go one in four again, because at following down this path, you could get these ones, these ones, or these ones. So 32 times 4, 128. Whoops, you can't see that. So in order to get all five of these genes to line up, only I have one chance in 128 babies to get a snow, which is albino anery, golden child, tiger, motley. One in 128 are my odds. It's going to be my million dollar animal. So this is kind of the way that we think about uh, investment strategies when you're breeding, but you got to know the math. So I'm sorry if that complicated it more for you. I mean, you know, for, for most of us, what we're doing, all we need to know is this. Is it homozygous recessive, homozygous dominant, heterozygous for something? And again, a, a dominant or an incomplete dominant trait means you're going to have something showing when you get an animal like this. A recessive one means nothing shows until you get both pairs matched up. Oh, one more thing, because that's definitely going to confuse you and you're going to want to study for, farther. Uh, Mendelian Punnett square is what you're going to use for one, you know, like a, um, they call it either a monohybrid cross, which means one trait, like a head albino to a head albino, uh, or a dihybrid. Punnett square is going to show you what you get when you breed like a, a double het snow to a double het snow. Tri hybrid for three traits and on and on. But once you go beyond dye hybrid, it's really better if you can just skip the step and segregate, meaning, you know, okay, it gets one copy from mom and dad and mentally write those down into these squares. This is going to be called the forked line method or the branch method of uh, genetic prediction. So you guys can watch more, check out more videos on YouTube and stuff. I'm sure they'll teach you there. Or grab your old science book out, you know, ninth, ninth grade biology, I think, is, is what it was. It, it was pretty fun because I actually knew this before I was in ninth grade. Because um, I was already commercially breeding leopard geckos at the time, so I was able to teach this section to my my science class. So for all you kids out there, I mean, this is it. It looks like a lot when you're unfamiliar with what's going on, but it really isn't that much. I mean, you can sit here and and cram it down in a day or two and play on those uh, morphmarket.com genetics calculators and the, and check your math. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in. That concludes this week's Free Tip Friday. Please hit subscribe to learn more stuff. Like the video so that more people get to see it when they search stuff. 
and you guys have a great weekend.